Well, hello, friends. Thank you for joining me on this Daily Connection. We want to get into the Word so that the Word of God gets into us. So today, we're continuing with that theme of Christian liberty. Now, Paul is focusing his attention toward why I don't take full advantage of the liberty that's given to me in Christ. And he's going to talk about a few situations where, as he's trying to intentionally engage certain groups, he will take on some characteristics of those groups in order that he can be more effective in communicating the gospel. So let's pick it up with 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 19. Although I am free from all and not anyone's slave, I have made myself a slave to everyone in order to win more people. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win Jews. To those under the law, like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, to win those under the law. To those who are without the law, like one without the law, though I am not without God's law, but under the law of Christ, to win those without the law. To the weak I became weak in order to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that I may by every possible means save some. Now, I do all this because of the gospel so that I may share in the blessings. There it is, verse 23. Now, I do all things because of the gospel. There's his why. He walks us through his what, but at the end he gives us his why. He said, I want to share in the blessings. I want to share in the bountiful spiritual blessings of seeing unbelievers come to hear the gospel and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he said that over and over again with three different examples. And it's a pretty broad sweep, if you will, of where he's going with this. Starts off by saying, hey, I'm, a free, I'm free. I'm not anyone's slave. However, I don't use my freedom to my advantage. Instead, I submit myself as like unto a slave to certain groups in order that what I do for my own personal freedoms doesn't become an offense to them. Instead, I want to line up as best I can with them so that I can present the gospel in a way that they'll be focused on it and not on what I'm doing, not on how I'm dressed, things like that. Starts off, of course, with his fellow Jews. Uh, we know how passionate Paul was about reaching the Jews. One, because of his persistence. Despite the fact that he had often been persecuted by them and to the point of being stoned, uh, he always made them his priority. He'd go into a city. If there was a synagogue, he started there, which from a strategic standpoint made sense because they would have been, already had a, a biblical worldview in a sense because they would have been reading the Old Testament scriptures. It would have been an easier starting point for him. But also, Paul never lost his passion for the Jews. He never allowed their harsh treatment of him to discourage him or deter him from trying to reach them with the gospel. And, and we see in Romans chapter 9, he said, Hey, I wish myself a curse for my fellow Jews. He said, Hey, I would be willing to become, be put myself back under the curse if it meant that my fellow Jews would come to a saving knowledge of Christ. That's how passionate he was for them. And so he starts off here in verse 20, To a Jew I became like a Jew, to win Jews. Uh, to those under the law, and you say, well, the, aren't those one the same? Yeah, to a degree they are, but as we know through the Gospels, you had some who were very strict in the law, the Pharisees. You had some who were a little more lackadaisical in the law, the Sadducees, and you have groups that exceeded that, and those who were you know, even more liberal than that. You know, We don't have time for all that. And the point Paul was making here is that to the Jews. So to a Jew, I would adhere to certain dietary laws. Uh, I would adhere to certain uh, celebrations of certain days in remembrance of historical events. Uh, you know, All these different things that would characterize a Jew and separate them apart from a Gentile. Paul said, I was willing to do that. I was willing to make myself that uh, to the point of, like, for instance, he had Timothy circumcised. You know, Timothy was Jew and Gentile, had a Jewish mother, Gentile father, Greek father. And so Paul knew that if Timothy was going to be able to minister to Jews, he had to be circumcised. So there were certain traditions that Jews held to that did not put Paul in con conflict with the gospel. That he said, you know what? I was willing to put myself there in order that I could reach Jews. In, in the same way with the law, he said, I was willing to put myself under the law, although I am not under the law, he says in verse 20. I, but I did that in order to win others. So he was willing to adhere to certain components of the law that really no longer had any bearing on him because his salvation didn't come by uh, observing certain rules and regulations. His salvation had come by grace through faith. He said, but I was willing to abide by those while ministering to this group so that I wouldn't be disqualified and so that they would be willing to receive my message. Uh, he goes on. He said, to those who are without the law, like one without the law. Then he says, though I am not without God's law, I'm under Christ's law. 
So there's a qualifier there. He says, hey, you know, I, I didn't just go to reckless abandon here. You know, I didn't, I didn't line up with everything that uh, an unbeliever would do in terms of how they go about living life. I still had a moral code. Uh, I still had a set of, of, of ethical beliefs. I, and, of course, he says the, the law of Christ. And, of course, the law of Christ is love. You know, love your neighbor. Uh, it's not just about how we treat someone, but it's the attitude we have about someone. It's the thoughts we think about someone. It's the words we say. And so Paul says, hey, as one who wasn't under the law, I became like that. However, I'm still, uh, you know, of obligated to God's law, which is the law of love. And so we have to be careful with that one, too, that we don't take that to some point that says, you know what? I don't have to abide by anybody's rules, regulations. I'm free from all that. So reckless abandon, you know, live and let live. That's not true at all. There is such a fine line between trying to minister, and don't forget, that was Paul's motive. Paul's motive, verse 23, I've, you know, verse 22, I've become all things to all people so that I may by every means win some. But Paul had his limit. Paul knew that in Christ there were certain things that he did not do that would be a direct violation of God's very character and God's standards. You know, but ultimately, he was driven by a desire to reach people with the gospel, and that's where we have to be. You know, we have to be willing to move outside of traditional boundaries that man and culture have created. But in the meantime, we have to make sure that we abide by God's righteous standards. We're not violating those, you know, in an effort to connect with unbelievers. And, and there's a fine line there. And praise God, we have his word and we have his spirit to guide us with both. This is not like we're doing some free for all here. We, we're very directed. We're very guided. And let's not forget the purpose is this. Not just so that I can enjoy freedoms and I can delight in certain worldly affections and passions. Not it. That's not it at all. The purpose is so that we can present the gospel and that they aren't, people aren't offended by things that we have done or not done because of certain you know, traditions we hold to. No, no, no. If they're offended by the word, that's one thing. If they're offended by the gospel, that's one thing. And their problem is not with us. Their problem is with God. But if I'm doing something or I'm not doing something that's not unethical, it's not immoral, but I'm just not doing it, or I'm doing something that is unethical, that is immoral, that is outside, and that is a turn off, you know, that is a deterrent to them hearing the gospel, well, then that's sin. That has become a sin because I have created a barrier, an unnecessary obstacle to that person hearing the gospel. Paul says, I'm not going to do that. I am not going to allow my personal freedoms in Christ to either degree or the other to hinder and, God forbid, become an obstacle to my fellow Jew or, an, or Gentile hearing the gospel. And that's really what it's about, friends. It's about living out a gospel purpose, which is what we're called to. Speaking of calling, you know, today there's going to be opportunities that God's going to put in your path to share the gospel, uh, to, to be compassionate towards someone that maybe has treated you harshly in the past, and they've tried to create obstacles and barriers between you and a relationship with them. Don't let that get in your way. Instead, be gospel-purposed in all that we do and say. And I know that's not easy, but you know what? We've been called to a life that's not easy. You know, salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you your life, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said. And so we've got to make certain that we stay focused on the mission. And we stay you know, directed toward the ministry of the gospel. And be encouraged in that. Let the Holy Spirit guide you in that. Speaking of encouragement, it's Wednesday, and so maybe you need a bit of encouragement yourself. Uh, you need a time in the Word. You need time in prayer. You need time of fellowship. And we've got that for you. At 4.30, we'll have prayer and Bible study time. Then again, at 6.30, we'll kick it off with adults. With children will be kicking off their Wednesday night events, as well as our youth also. So it's just a time to get together for encouragement and fellowship, encouragement in prayer, and encouragement in the Word. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. Until we're together, live sent.